How can I help? <sighs> Want to go inside? Sure. At the entrance, of course. So, we need to try to solve this problem with these thieves. One likely, as <clears throat> I was talking with Gertz, the ones that have been threatening the tavern. Okay. The only thing I can think of, and he said a detail that concerns me on something I would want to speak with Tiberius about. About one holding dual blades. He's, um, only... Tiberius has filled me in the short of it, but he's been trying to keep it quiet. It's definitely best to talk to him about it. I'm kind of in the dark with it. I just know that he's handling it. The only other two-blade thing I heard about was the day that Lodia was captured. Yeah, no, um... I do believe it's the same person. I don't think their allegiances are the same anymore from what I've heard. Again, something to talk to Tiberius about. I'm also more concerned that... I don't know if you've heard about the murders of the farmers late recently. <sighs> yeah, you mentioned it in passing. I want to hope that those aren't connected. Yeah, me too. Best way to cripple a city is to get rid of its resources. Very true. <clears throat> but they do seem to be focusing around the farmlands rather than, I don't know, the docks or anything we're importing or anything at Gerbaum specifically. It, it seems to be specifically farmlands. I don't know if that's because they're an easy target, or... But what's the one difference between getting goods from a port and getting goods right outside the walls? Enlighten me. Coin. Good. Goods from ports are always more expensive. They could be trying to bleed the barons even more of what they have. I see. Force them to import more. Run their coffers dry more. That's fucking clever. That's why that they could potentially, I'm not saying it's fact, it's just a thought. Yes. That they could as well be killing off the farmers. Okay. I'll definitely keep my eyes and ears open, but again, Tiberius seems to be the one spearheading this. Do we know where they are? I have no idea. The only two things I can think of to put an end to this is to either figure out where the goods are going or where they are in general. Which means it might have to be a night operation, but I know about these servants being about. I don't think they're connected. No, but they can cause a problem for night watches they the servants have primarily been focused around this house here and the tavern believe it or not anything else outside from that from what i've heard they don't seem to be paying much interest to so if we need to go somewhere else it might be it's, I, I would bet it's probably safe then i would make a suggestion could be dangerous 
few Tori Tiberius, all the ones that can see at night, try to figure out where these goods are being taken to or where they are. Yeah, I'll talk to Tibbs about it and see what he's come up with, see if we can act on it. That's really all that I can put together with this. Yeah, I know. With it's, the information that I know. It's kind of fucked. I get it. I still haven't talked to Anya about the other building, but when I do, I'll let you know. What about the Trident? The Trident do we know firms? if those are going to start coming back? Uh, yes. Now that we've taken Talor Keep, we should be able to get a constant supply. Supply? Wow. Supply flow from there, so it should help, but again, it's import. It is, unfortunately. But that was the first way to try to starve us out. That was the rubber baron, yes. This whole farmer problem that I'm trying to deal with. Which, I don't know if even if I pay them, that they'll even continue to supply here. Well, do they work they for you? Start supplying out. No. Hmm. The ones that are coming <laughs> in, possibly. Mm -hmm. But they had talked about supplying outside of Nordis, which I, of course, <laughs> warned them of orcs. Well, if they push their luck, the barons will get involved. And since Tiberius didn't tell you, Zenik had a conversation with me before trying to make me help him with... with his problems of getting slaves, which I don't get myself involved with whatsoever, <laughs> and getting him a warehouse. The thing he told me, in exchange for my help, he'd protect my farms from nobles. Apparently, since everything is sprying up, that the nobles are going to take the land. The farm is going to petition for it. Yes. Precisely. I had asked for a backing of some sorts to help with that. If you knew anybody that would prevent this from happening, because can either they will burn portions of it to try to cause problems, you know, if, if I can't have it, nobody can have it type of deal. Sure. No, oh, no. Well, if they burn the pipe, we make sure I'm over there first, because I want to at least get some out of it. <laughs> oh, yes. Don't worry, I'll be bringing you some. Any bone claws? Then I will get to work today. And get you what you need. Um, Baron Amem said I was the lead of my charges. But he still wants me to continue looking after her and stuff, so I wasn't going to go out of the city without guards regardless and stuff because I need to come back here for her and still look after her. The so, of Asha in the, even the though city he's alleviated charge, I, I still think in you need well, to tell us when my you opinion, leave the house. I don't think nothing should change as far as what we've been doing. Because Agreed, so don't you know, leave the house right without extra guards. I still got a job. And if you do, you need to tell us what you're doing so we don't run off into the forest like we nearly did today because we had no <laughs> idea where the fuck you were. Oh no. I so you them. need to tell us. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. <clears throat> Ooh. Just as I was giving her a dressing down.
I'm not going to get to yell at her now, am I? I Arn's going to do it. <laughs> Kin did not seem to be pleased with us there. Got a couple side eyes. Well, I'll make sure that if I go to the grove, one of the knights comes with me. Lord, there have been a few incidents of people surveying the barons. As I was saying, it doesn't matter that the rules have changed, the situation is still the same. If you leave the house, you need to tell us yeah. or get one of us so that we don't run off into the fucking okay. woods like we nearly did today. Doesn't matter that it's just inside no, the city, the servants of Ash are in this city. And on a day like this where it's foggy as shit, you could disappear and we'd never see you again. These are just normal people walking through town. Alright, I'll make sure I at least have one of you knights with me at all times. Looking around, shifty um, well I want to show you this though. Here. Maybe, maybe, maybe your, civilian. maybe your dad would give his opinion on it, but I wrote out a, I wrote out a letter to, uh, Mr. Galazio. He was that merchant that I had done business with, that we had a good rapport with. He went to Coracatus and he told me if I ever needed to contact him for help, I could. In this deal I've written down is that we're looking for a, an artisan armor smith for here, for Nitus, and that I would even help if I need to, to pay for them a place to stay here, at least for the start, to give them a start. Tell them but I want to know, before... We can hire them on, I can well, hire him before, on, as part of the forge. You, well, if, if you want to, if it's okay, can you write yesterday. part of that down and put your signature on it? Because I want you to, if we get one... That's another feather in your cap with the barons that you brought an artist and armorsmith here. And I'd rather you have more credit than I do. I just know the merchants very well and he's very connected. So he could help us in court case and getting us an armorsmith here. If your dad doesn't mind you giving, you know, the Griffin Sill. You know. Um, petitioning to bring an artisan armorsmith here from Coracatus so that we can have someone work in the forge and actually repair armor. Figured we put the old it's, on it. It's a it's a merchant that I have a very good rapport with. I had to do two separate contracts with him, and when he had left, he sent me. He left me with a letter saying that if I ever needed help or needed anything, that all I need merely send him a letter for contact. If you think it's a good call, so be it. Seal it with our staff. Also, I think it would be a good feather in your son's cap with the barons that he bought an artisan here if we do get one. I'm not sure if Harry spoke to you already, but um, we need somewhere safe to keep those supplies, those bits of food from the farms. Those supplies? We shouldn't have been at the tavern anyway. This is something that Harry's orchestrated himself. <sighs> I wasn't even aware of this until today. Great. They should be going to the granaries. Okay. I will remind him of that then. I have no idea what's going on with any of this. All I know is that there's townsfolk who are starting to get angry because food isn't going where it's supposed to. And Fo while we've been alleviated with the conflict being over, there's still those apparently who have. Uh, put their goods towards this and did not receive compensation? I have no idea. Mm. Harry gave goods to the tavern, they got stolen, the farmers wanted compensation for it to be paid what they were agreed for, however they were asking for 20, 25 copper per food, which is out fucking rageous. Harry's agreed to pay them, just so they'd shut up about it. But... We don't want well, it to happen as again. Outrageous as that may sound, they were the only source of food, and it was an agreement that was less than what they were getting from 
Casetto. A deal is a mm. deal. Apparently they made a deal already and they went back on it because it wasn't in writing. They have no way of proving it. <sighs> so it's one word against the other? Harry seems to be working it out. I remind him of the granaries that he should be delivering it there rather than to Gabum. I'm gonna go speak to Gabum and find out what the fuck he's doing. Yep. <clears throat> Hmm. Things at the ground level are getting a little problematic, so we have to keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Oh, I put, also, Lord Earnhardt, I put in the cellar, I got the four uh, poison testing kits down in the cellar for us. Excellent. Well, I've needed them. Good. <clears throat> yes. Uh, when I go to the Merchant's Guild, I'll see if I can get some rare viscera, and then I'll be able to give you uh, tier 3 anti-poisons for you both, so you always have one on your person. Thank you. If you can get an extra rare viscera for me, that would be lovely. Now well, things should be rather safe and quiet. Should is the word. I'm merely going to the tavern. I am. And conveniently disappearing into the dust. <laughs> of course. As always. Well, more doors and roof hatches are being broken in. The doors, like I don't know who's service. doing that. Oh, of course. <laughs> Which is why thinking. we need to get our reinforced doors up tonight. They should be done. I've been working on them throughout most of the evening. Mm, hmm. The bars on the windows. And... I'll uh, uninstall these uh, just so we're ready. <clears throat> Take care, my lord. You as well. All right. Okay, so. Well, but go anywhere to this one night with me. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna say you're free to come and go. Um, I know, but. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll let you know when I'm ready to go out to go herb gathering. Oh yes, because yesterday wasn't. Harrowing. Yeah, we'll, we'll try again. Well, we don't In have the to fog. go over there. We don't have a we don't have a wolf to look after. We'll just go right out here. I'm not that dumb. Well, you can understand my concern. Inclement weather, and now we know orcs are now just laying in the fields, just no. waiting. We can wait until the fog burns <laughs> off. If you want to go. I it's whatever my lord wants to do, Kyla. No, I, I said we. Could, uh, we you say the, the word, I'll go. I mean, we need the herbs, for potions, and stuff, and I need to make a delivery to. Uh, uh, Venrac with the guards. We also need to live, <laughs> so you can keep. This. I know, I, I know, I know. That's why I, I don't <clears> want to go far. I just want to go to that spot right uh, on the other side of the vineyard, right there. Right. Well, I'm just weighing the risk. Um, I will await orders. Uh... <sighs> Wherever Where she you goes, you go. Hi. Can do. Let me see. If the one. That well, worst case space. scenario, I have Sunny, and I could just pick you up, and we will go. Okay. Um. Well, since I can't go to the merchant just yet, we can go pick the herbs really quickly. It shouldn't take long. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, we'll get that done, so that way I'm not out of the city too long. Mm-hmm. Soon you all have all the doors and bars on the windows like it needs to be. Yes. Secured. Well, I think everyone's busy, so should be fine. I'll just need to find out from your from arm how many um your inventory is full. <laughs> I 
online tourney, we're gonna go horseback riding. Just for a little bit. Oh, Brand might be busy, but I think you're with him. If you want to let him know we're going out. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I am. Just a quick 20 minute herb gathering. Yes, that is it. <sighs> Nothing crazy about it. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Let me put my mask on. Okay. Yep, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Come on, Sonny. Down your arm. Whoops. I always launch out way. You, know. you got it. That's all right. Uh, yell if you hear or feel any thundering of the ground. If I do, if I feel anything, I'll just nuke everything. Uh, what? Nothing. Just no. Like, don't do that. Oh. I couldn't do that even if I wanted to. You elves always picking the nuclear option. No, I don't <sighs> think so. Not always want that. I wonder which gray orc told them they could just camouflage themselves in the dirt. Today's a ripe day for it. That's why I say you just come to this place a little bit well, better. It's not we as, can uh, we can ride around in a uh, in a circle just to keep a perimeter. Do that, stutter patrol.
Ah, there they are. One more and we should be done. Okay, that should be it, uh, Lord Earnhardt. Where is he at? Marcus? Uh, where's Marcus? Yeah, this fog fucking sucks. I'm just gonna follow right beside you. <laughs> yeah, stick close to me. Mark? Merwin? This horse got stuck. Uh, maybe I am not seeing him anywhere on the Marcus. Uh, radar thing. Saw a group oh, go there by. he is. A group? God, you scared the shit out of me. What kind of group? <laughs> no. It was Lorelei, Sigvana, and um, Ro. The scouting. A what? The Badlands. Why? Forks. They just want to be very proactive. Fuck's sake. I get, I get it for me. Not my priority. Do we aid them or do we just head on back? Not our priority. Okay. I got, I got what I needed. Well, so far that is the only group besides Galail's elves that are out here. Must return home. Okay. <clears throat> yep, and then I can go... Then I can prepare some of this and go to the merchant skill, see if I can't secure something, or maybe I'll run into a point in like today, maybe. Good, good. Yeah, so talk to some dwarves. Uh, yeah, give me the words of other individuals, especially some. 
on my patience, are you? <laughs> You're hilarious. <clears throat> I think I dropped Miss Venora along the way. You did it. You fucking killed her. Well done. said she has to go to the merchant skill to deliver a, uh, a letter. <clears throat> you are sticking to her. Mm -hmm. Since she has a habit of running off. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course. Mm. Good luck. I'm alone. Right? Afternoon. <sighs> Probably. Afternoon. Your legs are sore. You've been running around a lot. Why are your legs sore? You slept weird. You slept. You woke up. You woke up sore. Ah. <clears throat> Alright, come with me. Are you sore sore? <laughs> Saw saw, like actually saw saw. Okay, this is gonna be good then. Come along. All right, wait here. I'll be right back out. That's a good spot for this. Let's go to the beach, beach. Let's get away. Bits. Yeah. <clears throat> Where's Sarah? Shouting about? She went to bed. She's our oh, mercenary, right. I'm sure she won't mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I love for the I love for the yeah. You you handle the Mary. Thank you, thank you. you. The one with the scar. With the, with the, thank you. Uh, not recently. Miss Martin. After the encounter with Silverbane, that didn't really heal much. But you wanted to pick up right, Maybe out here is fine. All right. <clears throat> Lesson one of sword training. Are you ready? Okay. Just stretch, limber up. Because the majority of this Aka is going to be leg work, and I mean that literally. We're doing it today when your legs hurt, so that when they don't hurt, it'll feel even better. If you can do it when it's hard, doing it when it's easier makes it that much easier. Make sense? Putting on the training music in my head. Oh my god. My head is so laggy. How much do you know of swordplay? You've probably fought them a lot. Stick. Stick? You've fought with the stick before? Okay. Well... This is a gift for you. This is the trading sword that I used. You're going to maintain it like a real sword as well. This type of... I see. Okay. Let's start with the very basics then. Swords are to be gripped primarily by the handle here. Yes. Okay, grip it by the handle, either with one hand if it's a one-handed sword, or two if it's a two-handed sword. There you go. Now that is a technique of holding it the way that you're holding it, but primarily, you want to face it with the edge towards your opponent. These are the cutting side. This is what allows you to cut through their flesh. Otherwise, I mean, see? There you go. Alright, let's go over the pieces of the blade. As I showed you before, you have the grip, or the handle, down here. At the very bottom, the rounded bit, is a pommel. It can look very different on different swords. This is the guard, or the cross guard. You notice mine's a little different, mine has a basket on it. But it still primarily works the same. Moving up the blade, you have the blade itself. Now, like the weapon that you have there, a small short sword, and the sword that I have here, a long sword, it has two edges. One on this side, 
and one on this side. There are some weapons there, like messes or falchions, that only have one blade. There's debate over which is better per se, but they have different uses, different styles of fighting. Primarily, I'm going to teach you a two-bladed stance and attacks. That way you can transfer it over if you choose later. You follow me so far? Okay. Because this blade has two sides, or edges, we break them down into the true edge, which is the one facing your opponent, and the false edge, which is the one facing you. You don't get much use out of the false edge, especially if you only have a one-bladed weapon, but there are certain maneuvers that you can do that rely on a false edge. For an example, if I'm like this, and we're blocking, I can cut down with the false edge, yes? Different parts of the weapon as well. This is more, uh, they're less physical and more of a mental kind of reminder. Down here at the base, near your cross guard, this is your strong. This is the strong part of your blade. Up here is the weak part of your blade. Now the reason for this is, if you put your weak against my strong here, and push, you notice it doesn't exactly. Now if we switch, and you push, or I try to push, you notice it takes very little force. You see? So you always want to try and get them into your strong, or put you into their weak, ideally. We can transfer this into certain blocks like this. With your weak up there, I have a lot of control over your sword. This is because of leverage, but we won't get into that. I don't think that's important right now. Just remember those parts. True edge, false edge, strong, Bizarre, weak. Uh, I had no idea you were interested in sword play. Very interesting. Now for the fundamentals, the important part. This is the most important lesson I can give you, so it pays to pay attention. We're going to go over footwork. Footwork is the groundwork on which a good swordsman is built. So, the stance I will teach you is a duelist stance. This works well for a two-handed weapon, or a one-handed weapon primarily, I should say. But it can be transferred to a two-handed weapon, like this. So, you turn your body side on to your opponent, your front foot, your toes are facing them. Your back foot is opposite to that. So you're forming a, I want to say a T, you're forming a cross with your feet. That's exactly it. There you go. The reason we do this is I will show you. You have a lot of access to movements here. The important part about moving during sword play is to make sure that you yourself are not off balance at any given time. Now sure, you can have your regular person standing there and they can move around like a normal person would, but you notice, as I'm moving, I'm lifting my foot, and in that moment, I'm off balance. A good swordsman will notice that and they will take advantage of that. That is not what you want. You want your movements to be stable, upright, you don't want to drop your guard, and you don't want to become off balance. So I'm going to go over some basic movements that you can use to maneuver around a fight or a battlefield without giving those openings to your opponent. Remember, keep your sword up and keep the point between their eyes. Never watch your sword, and never watch your opponent's sword. Always watch your opponent's eyes. They tell more than their sword ever, ever could. Are you following me so far? Very good. The first movement we're going to learn is called an advancing step. Now this allows us to close in with our opponent without giving the opening, as I mentioned before. It consists of two movements. Well, one quick movement, but two small movements. You want to spring forward with your back knee and land on the ball of your front foot, like this. Okay? Remember, keep your stance up and your sword up. Very good. Very quick skip movement. Step forward, land. Just like that. 
Now the reverse of this is a retreating step. This allows you to create distance with your opponent without giving them an opening. It is the same thing, but in reverse. Spring off the ball of your front foot and land on the base of your back foot. Like this. You see? Close. One quick movement. Just like that. Step, 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 step. You don't want to be a hop, remember. If you're hopping, you're giving too much of an opening for your opponent. They'll see you hop, and while you're there, there is a moment there where I could gain advantage. Remember, you are keeping your knees slightly bent, your body upright, your head level. Simple step forward like that. Hmm? Give it a shot. There you go. Mm -hmm. Don't feel afraid to extend your leg a little bit more. You don't want to lean too much, because if I'm doing this, obviously you know exactly what I'm about to do. But it's one quick, just like this. Yes, that's 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 too much. <laughs> Just like that. That's a lunge. Yes, we'll get into that later. There you go. So this is an advancing step and a retreating step. Again, these are used to close distance with your opponent while keeping upright and ready, and if you need to, creating distance from your opponent. Hmm? You following me so far? Very good, very sharp. The next maneuver I'm going to teach you also closes distance, but it switches your stance up. It's called a passing step. And this one's a little bit more tricky, but I think you've got it in you. You rotate on the ball of your front foot and bring your other foot around like this. You'll notice I've closed the distance with you again. However, we're now in a different stance. So you can change how you're holding your sword as well, to reflect that. And, reverse, a reverse passing step is the same bit in reverse as I said before. You land like that. Hmm? Just like that. With a longer sword like this, I can... Why would he chase after something that's not his? I have many different stances I could use. With a shorter sword, you're a little bit more limited. But you understand the practicality of this, especially if you can do wield, like I can. Now, both weapons are pointed towards them. But for now... Passing step. Reverse passing step. There you go. Now you're getting it. Okay. Also and again, advancing step, retreating step, passing step, reverse passing step. Now, let's say I want to switch my stance, but I don't want to get closer to my opponent, and I don't have the option to move back behind me. Yes. What then? This is called the triangle step. And it's in three movements. Both work. One, square your shoulders. And two. Well, I suppose two movements, but... You square. There you go. One, two. One, two. One, two. Notice how I am changing my stance. I am adjusting how I am. I can keep my opponent on their toes, I'm not giving any opening, I'm not going off balance, and I'm not giving ground, I'm also not putting myself at risk. Oh, that is the use of the triangle step. Yes. You don't want to overextend, you want to square. There you go, that's it. My name is Tim. One, two. One, two. What are those swords? Well, you know how to use them? There you go. And of course, you can do it in reverse as well. There's only one. But yes, I know how to use it. Mm -hmm. Very good. The great things about these fundamentals, Arca, is that they can be transferred to nearly 
nearly any weapon. In fact, you can even do well unarmed. These maneuvers are all the same. You see? Works with a spear, works with a shield, works with a two-handed weapon, a one-handed weapon. These fundamentals are transferable to nearly any sort of fighting. It's all in the footwork. So, in your own time, we're going to go through some of these as well. I'll call them, you do them. Ready? Remember to keep your blade squared. Advancing step. Retreating step. Passing step. You did the triangle step. Remember, swing your whole body around. You want to keep squared with them. Just because you're switching your stance doesn't mean you want to square up. You want to remember, the least part of your body exposed as possible at any given time. The passing step completely switches you around. Okay? Reverse passing step. Triangle step. Reverse triangle step. Passing step. Advancing step. Not walking into your desk chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a common mistake when moving from, when doing a passing step, is your weight is still on the front foot. Remember, you can reset. Doesn't need to be, still be there from when you moved forward. Reset your stance if you need to. Of course, you can if you gain the advantage that way. But if you're going to do another maneuver, it's better to be upright. Otherwise, you find the issue that we're in before. I'm leaning forward and I'm trying to do an advancing step, yet all of my weight is on my right foot. So if you're going to maneuver forward from there, it's important to square. There you go. <clears throat> and of course, you can chain these together. Advancing step. And a passing step. Reverse. There you go. Of course, when you learn a bit more about attacking and such, this is when you combine it with your strikes or defenses. But for now. Usually retreating steps coincide with blocks or parries. Exactly. Advancing steps coincide with attacks. Mm -hmm. But those are the first couple of movements I want you to really focus on. Obviously, we'll practice a few now, and then in your own time, you don't even need to have your sword with you. Just when you have a spare moment, just go through them. They'll start to feel more natural as you do it. It's like a dance. You see? Go through them in your own time. <laughs> But that will conclude our first lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll go over more tomorrow. We'll go over some guards and blocks. Agreed? Well done. You pick it up fast. I've had other people... If you need to practice on Swan Misaka, I am available. My teacher, when he was teaching me this part, made me do it until my legs were jelly. Fell to the floor. I won't do that to you, since you've already got sore legs today. But you get the idea. No, just wait until you get to the blocking lesson. <laughs> Left gut. Right gut. Yes, I still hear them in my sleep. Speaking of, do you want to do a bit of sparring? A spa? I could spa with you. Oh, 
this, I would love to see. You hang on to it. You need to care for it and look after it, like a real sword. This is part of swordsmanship too. <clears throat> Just tuck it into your belt. Here. Nope, you got it. I'll make you something. Ask Tori to make like a loop of leather or something you can... A spa then, huh? We can do whatever you go to at least keep active. Okay. Does that make sense? <clears throat> do you want to check if there's a spare god? I'll check. If not, we can just mime it out. Yeah. We'll hold back. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be sure not to impale you. You'd be doing me a favor, Tang. Let's see. I, I think <clears throat> I see a rogue. <clears throat> I'm gonna listen in for half a second and see how this goes. If not... <laughs> so after we, we kill Tang, we... <laughs> Retreating step. Advancing step. Triangle step. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> you were right. The gods are busy. Okay, we can, um... Can you roll in inside your head? Because I can have my brain cells do it, if you'd like. I deleted that to make room for other things. I see. I can always just bring up a tiny window. Do it, do it in your head. So do it in my head. have a record, just in case. Yeah. Okay, chat, roll two d20s. We'll go with me on top, Tang on bottom. As God intended. As God intended. We'll do three Depending rounds. Depending on how this dice roll goes out. Yeah. First of three touches as usual. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, where is my kicking ass music? Alright. We're both trained, right? There's no bonuses. Yeah, trained. All right. Well, there's Warforged bonus, but I'm not using it. Okay. Uh, Tang. <clears throat> <laughs> As you square up with Kyla, you realize it's been a bit since you've been in a duel of sorts like this. You don't know whether it's the precipitation and the fog today, but with a seven, you're a little off your game. However, with Kyla's four, you'll find an opening pretty soon. All right, Tang. Ready? Ready when you are. Okay. Yep. Okay. 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 Um, that was weird. Let's. Oh. Did I attack through the block? <laughs> you, you hit me. I definitely <laughs> felt it. Roll again, chat. I'm about to headbutt uh, Tang. <laughs> I see what happened. You... I keep forgetting you take that separate stance. <laughs> okay, okay. That's good. You know, maybe I shouldn't use the offhand. Alright. Alright. The two fighters are warmed up now. After that shocking display of whatever that was, they're now honed in. They've remembered how each other fights. And with 
Kyla's 18 to Tang's 17. A prolonged fight will ensue, but Kyla will barely get in on this one. sword underneath the fucking slide swing. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're about, Tang. Roll again, chat. We've done this before. We're probably trained by the same person. No, my teacher was about three times your size. True, that's right. I forgot about him. Me holding back is a lot harder than you think. <laughs> Especially because I was taught by somebody who swings with his full body weight. Feel free not to hold back so much, then. Alright. And Tang does right. just that with Kyla's 12 and Tang's 14. As Kyla requests. <laughs> he doesn't hold back. Come on, Tang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, God. Uh, maybe hold back a little bit. Uh. Okay. Yep. You told me not to. Yeah, I know what I I know what I said. I think that's two to one. Right? It is two one to one. one. I win. Yep. Roll again, chat. All right, motherfucker. <laughs> Come on, you've got speed on your side. Use it. It's been a long day. It's been a very long day. Emo Emotional turmoil is one thing. I've been Physical turmoil is another. Hurting cats all day. <clears throat> Alright. And for the match points, Kyla, with a four, his tiredness catching up to him. And Tang's 11 seals the duel. Okay. At some point, I'm gonna send the tip of your blade into the dirt. Okay. Well fought. Careful when you're pulling that. <laughs> you know, I think sitting at council tables is making you a bit rusty. I've been learning how to fight people at the table in the conference room. I've been... I'm getting old, Tang. Yeah, you might want to give your tongue a rest and work on your arms. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had much time to work out, but... You're clearly still up to speed. I suppose you don't have muscles that get tired, though, do you? Not exactly. It's mainly my memory that's an issue. Remembering the techniques, movements, footworks. The combat circle, combat <clears throat> line. Making sure that you're able to move along and control the area. When in doubt, just pick them up and crush their skull. Well, there's always the fallback of let instincts take over, but that usually leaves a whole lot more corpses. Sometimes that's not a bad thing, though. Well done. Yeah. Well, I if you... that's the default whenever I get punched in the face. If you want to learn from Tang instead of me, now I understand. Hey, Kyler. Hey, what's one, up? One last thing. Aww. Heads. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Don't do this. <clears throat> yeah, right. If I wanted to do that, I would... Well, I wouldn't actually tell you anything. 
It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Tang. Alright, be sure to go over those movements. Tomorrow I'll find you again and we'll go over some blocks, huh? Alright. I have to go fix my ego. <laughs> have a good day, Lord Earth. And you. It's hard to duel people when I'm, you know, two seconds behind them. But, eh, that was fun. Alright, um, I need to be right back. I need to, like, turn up the aircon. Um, and I will 